Welcome back. OS Bridge, Strange of Live, Cami Chaos, Chris Messina. Thank you. We just saw your talk. Great. How was it? Um, I'll, I saw half your talk, and oh. I, the rest of it was lunch. But I think it went really well. <laughs> Everyone seemed to enjoy it. We lost one of our crew for the, <laughs> for the duration of it. it. Must have been amazing. It was. It was. Hey, hey Nate, how was the talk? Awesome. Oh yeah. Well, the official good. word that it was awesome, and it, it looks like your girlfriend got to see that. She did, which which uh, I was excited. Hopefully, she's still watching. She's actually in San Diego, so. Uh, oh, so she was not here. She's watching the stream. No. Yeah. yeah. Good for us. Yeah. So so technology. <laughs> Great. Technology does nice things. Okay, this is Chris Messina at Chris Messina on Twitter. Yes. What's your website? Factoryjoe.com. Factoryjoe.com. And uh, your talk, I get social, supermarket, and then I... Yeah. So what's the name of the talk? Oh, uh, the name of the talk was... Um, s- oh, s- it's not just me. No. <laughs> social network supermarkets and how to defeat them. And how do you defeat a social network supermarket? You know, so I have to tell you a story. Uh, I love stories. I, um, I think I came up with the title for this talk a long time ago or mm-hmm. recently when I was drunk. And I'm not sure which. It's the same thing. Because the effect was the same. I had no idea what I was talking about <laughs> whatsoever. And uh, so I tried to put this talk together and I, I eh, you know, kind of pulled it together, I guess. So anyways, to answer your question, um, I think the, the, the point that I was trying to make, which I think I probably, you know, thought about in high school and then forgot about or something is like, wow, we're really like, you know, relying upon all these food providers to take care of us, you know, in many ways to make sure that we can eat as long as we have money to pay them and so on. Mm-hmm. Um, and so supermarkets, of course, have sort of abstracted away this idea, this need for food uh, that humans and all, you know, carbon based life forms have. And um, well, there's sort of an interesting parallel to be made, I guess, with some of the larger social networks where. Uh, many people today, uh, you know, rely on them on a daily basis to get their email, to talk to their friends, and so on. And um, I think increasingly in the work that I'm doing with OpenID and dorky stuff like that. Um, <laughs> dorky stuff like that. That's the whole reason we have huge conferences uh, yeah, and stuff. You basically. Know. <laughs> to, to make it less dorky. Um, <clears throat> is that people are going to be relying more and more on these social networks mm-hmm. to um, host and store their identity, their virtual identity on the web. And that's not unlike supermarkets. And uh, the way in which supermarkets go about sort of, you know, creating value and so on is aggregating a large number of people's tastes into one place. And um, you end up having sort of a homogenization of, of tastes in some respects. And of course, that's changed a little bit. We have a little more, you know, diversity in, in some um, food providers today. Um, but, you know, on the whole, I guess it's just really important to me as we sort of embark on this new strange social web that, uh, that's, that's, that's existing is that we sort of look at that and we realize, wow, you know, if we use these services as our identity provider on the web, whether it's the Facebook or Twitter or whatever, um, that they have a very different type of relationship with us than uh, used to be the case with mm-hmm. social networks. You know, you go to MySpace, you'd log in, you check your messages, and that'd be it. Well, the difference now is if you're using your MySpace account to sign into some other service, well, in many ways, you've got to be on very good behavior with MySpace because if you do something wrong, or you know, you leave a negative comment on the president's photo stream, for example, the case of Flickr recently, uh, you might just be deleted. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's a very strange sort of, you know, what are the rights in that case where someone is actually sort of, you know, your identity provider on the web? And we so don't it's know. It's like re- re- uh, refusing someone's service at the supermarket, saying, no, you can't shop here anymore. Kind of, yeah. And it's like, well, what am I going to do? I can't, you know, garden. I forgot how to do that because I'm so reliant on, you know, these big chain supermarkets. So. I don't think we're quite to that point. I don't know if we'll ever be quite to that point. But part of the point, I guess, about the talk was to think, you know, way out here in sort of crazy man land, you know, Ted Kaczynski stuff, and, you know, bring it back a little bit (laughs) into the middle so that people can maybe apply some of the stuff and just, you know, when they're thinking about it, like, oh, do I really want to be using Facebook as my, you know, universal idea across the web? And if some people do, awesome, great, you know, more power to them. But if they sort of stop and say, oh, that's interesting. Maybe Facebook won't be as cool in five years or whatever. Maybe I want to own my own domain and pick and choose which services I associate with. Mm-hmm. Now would be a great time to start thinking about that. So for the average person, <laughs> right? I, I have my own domain. I can associate myself with that. I know how to do that. Perfect. That's all good. But for someone who's my mother, yep. or for someone who, I, I was amazed. I was sitting out in my front yard the other day, and these two teenage girls went down the street. One of them was rollerblading, and the other one was riding her bicycle. Okay. And the one who was riding her bicycle was like, I don't understand why you don't text message. And the other girl was like, 
because I don't want to. It's stupid. And she's like, it's just like email, but on your phone. <laughs> and she was like, well, I don't like email either. And all I could, that was my best teenage that was, girl that was impression. Awesome. Yeah, I was convinced. Um, I was like thinking back to the teenage days when I talked like that. They really did sound like that. I bet. Only they were on bicycle. And, and it, this was the little snippet I heard of this conversation as they went past my house. And I could not... I was so stunned to hear a teenager say, I don't like email, I don't like text messaging, it's too complicated. So for those people, and that's all they know to do is use Facebook, if they even know yeah. to have an open ID at all or to have their themselves associated in different places on the internet, what, what can we do to kind of make the supermarket easier for them? Um. Well, it's actually, it's the gardening part that I think... Oh, the gardening easier for them. I'm sorry. That, that's fine. I mean, so part of, part of I guess, the, the, the point is not to be... My garden is dying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't even know where to start. <laughs> My house plants are dying. Um, well, so we're at this, this, this very challenging point, I think, um, a very transitional point, I guess, where the answer is not that everybody should have an open ID necessarily mm -hmm. or should host their own. Um, you know, I don't run a credit card company, so I can have my own credit card, you know, provider. Um, however, there are two things that I think are fairly, maybe even three things that people could do today who are interested in this and think that it's important or worthwhile considering. Um, obviously, you start by just getting your own domain name, and that's mm -hmm. fairly easy. Um, you know, it's not for it's the faint of heart. a barrier of entry. Um, yeah. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's like, you know, eight, ten bucks a year or something like that. Okay, well, this is your identity that's kind of, you know, maybe something you should think about investing in. And... More importantly is that if you start now and you start using this identity across the web when you're leaving blog comments or things like that, then it'll build up kind of a reputation or association with you over time. So when you start using this you know, identity maybe more widely, you've now built up some sort of data capital there. Um, that helps. So that's sort of one part of it. Um, but it's very easy to get a domain. I mean, Google will sell you one. Yahoo apparently are selling some really good ones. Um, you can also get that get one from WordPress.com. Mm -hmm. So if you really want to start, you know, just tinkering with this, you can get an account at WordPress.com, sign up, um, buy your own domain, and do what's called domain masking. So you have a blog there, and you basically are masking your WordPress.com account with your own domain, and you can actually use that as an open ID. So you don't really need to get into the, like the nitty gritty of how it actually works. You just start using that domain as your open ID wherever you go. If you're a little more technical or if you have a server or you get some hosting, you can actually set up and install WordPress yourself using the open source uh, version mm -hmm. and um, install the OpenID plugin, which is actually from the Deezer project. That's so <laughs> that would be sort of, you know, the tiers of going out and doing it. Or, I mean, you could, you know, you could use, um, well, I mean, you can use, you know, your MySpace and things like that if you think they're going to be around forever and you want to, you know, stay on MySpace. And, and if that really is your identity, then that's absolutely fine. Great. You know, outsource your identity to someone else, let someone else care and deal with that. That's fine. I don't have any problems with that. Um, it's just that I think there's a moment and an opportunity for people to sort of step back and say, well, is this really want to be, you know, who I want to be identifying myself as, yeah. you know, with all the ads that MySpace puts there or something like that. Okay. So you mentioned the DSO project. Yes. Do you want to talk about that anymore? Yeah, uh, a little bit. I think um, at, 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 at base, the idea of the DSO project is to sort of help facilitate and bring about some reusable building blocks for the social web. Mm -hmm. um, and these are open source, sort of anybody can build on them, um, free to use types of technologies that if they achieve widespread adoption mm -hmm. can radically change, I think, the way that people build social websites on the web. Um, and one of the things that I talked about in my talk is actually activity streams. And activity streams, I think, are very interesting because they move away from just being, you know, taking feeds from blogs, which is what people are writing about these posts, um, to what people are doing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the case of, you know, these teenage girls you're talking about, it might be more interesting for them to find out what their friends are up to, you know, what games they're playing, what movies they're going to, as opposed to reading blog posts or, or things like that, who knows. Mm -hmm. um, but furthermore, once you have those activity streams, then, um, it should be easy for people to filter on the things that they want to you know, know about. It's like, oh, show me all the movies that my friends saw in the last two weeks, because that's sort of a, a, ra a, a gauge of what might be interesting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, or, or give me a, a feed of the last couple things that my friends have listened to on the radio to show me some new music or whatever. And the feed formats that we have today really don't capture the differences between those different types of um, activities that well. 
So that's sort of like the whole point. So right now, anyway, is working on that. And I will point out that not only has, has MySpace adopted the activity stream format mm -hmm. um, on their platform, which is great, um, we've also had Facebook adopt it too. So that's really good. So we've got some large providers getting in the game. Um, it just turned out that Opera launched a web browser in their, I'm sorry, a web server in their web browser mm -hmm. the other day, um, which I took some issues with in terms of their marketing pitch. Um, but that they actually support this format as well, which is really interesting. So what that means is that now you have these large social networks that are pushing out this type of data, and you have a browser that's getting into the game and sort of also supporting this stuff. And so very quickly, it seems that we'll be able to use this format for maybe some very interesting applications. Um, <clears throat> do any of the others use hashtags to make um, their point? <laughs> not as much. No. Ooh, well, not but as much. we're going to talk about that. Uh, we didn't. Um, we don't have to get into it deeply, but I, I am very impressed by the importance both of, of Twitter as a communications channel, mm -hmm. um, but also the use of hashtags in organizing. You know, these. Well, I don't know if they're actually organizing the protest or just being used to talk about this stuff. But um, that whole idea of sort of emergent groups that requires no um, sort of formal creation. Mm -hmm. I think is really interesting and really powerful. It just speeds on itself. Yeah, and so once you get momentum around it, and you know, I mean, I don't know if this is true or not. I mean, there's always you know rumors and, and uh, disinformation in these types of situations. But if it is true that the Iranian authorities were using that hashtag, you know, as a mechanism to track what people were talking about, then the great thing about hashtags is that they're disposable. So you just start a new one, mm -hmm. and you get people talking on that one for a while, mm -hmm. and you know, you can basically stay ahead of the game because. Um, yeah, that's the whole idea is that it's just providing a token, a, a means around which people gather and then they disperse, they go someplace else and they reconvene around something else. As opposed to the more formal type of group system where, you know, with Facebook you start a group and then you have to invite everybody or they apply to join or whatever it is and it's just really heavyweight. Yeah, it Anyways. takes organization and pre-planning yeah. and thought. And, and then it's brittle because yeah. then if it gets infiltrated, then you have to shut it down and start the whole process all over again. And so, anyways, I think it's pretty pretty neat to see that actually happen. Chris, Chris Messina on Twitter, mm -hmm. Factory Joe online. Thank you so much for joining us again. Thanks, appreciate it. It was it was good to have you. Yeah. Thanks. Bye.